When Snow White and the Seven Dwarves premiered at the Carpe Circle Theater in December of 1937, all the doubt in Disney's folly seemed to melt away as the audience sobbed over Snow's death. Any uncertainty over whether moviegoers would enjoy the story of a character made out of lines and animation cells was quickly put to rest. Before Snow White, animation had been limited to silly little shorts, many of them experimental. They weren't something to be taken seriously, like the feature-length pictures. So when Walt Disney decided to make the first animated film and use it to tell a compelling, emotionally rich story that could enchant viewers of any age, people thought he was a whack job. Production was arduous as Hollywood dismissed the film as a fool's errand. Animators were paid bonuses for coming up with gags for the many animals in the movie, Walt would literally act out character movements and dialogue for the animators, and the crew had even created a multi-plane camera, stacking physical cell sheets on top of each other through panes of glass in order to create the illusion of depth. And when the movie finally released, it opened to astounding success. People across the world were taken with the amount of life and personality that these characters radiated. They hummed along with the dwarves, they feared and probably stand the evil queen, and they sobbed over Snow White's glass coffin funeral. No, really, audiences were literally bawling their eyes out over the apparent death of this cartoon girl. In an article from the Times, Obera H. Rawls notes, Without a single human actor, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves may seem to you to be more human than anything you have seen for a long, long time. Its romance, pathos, laughter, and beauty will make you laugh and cry, and will hold you with excitement. If you don't think that a fairy story whose characters are just animated drawings can hold adult interest, take your eyes off the screen if you can and note the suspense of the audience. And I can guarantee you, nobody in that audience was thinking, hey, but what if this was live action? You know, like everything fucking else. Live action remakes have been a thing for ages and the bane of my fucking existence. Most often the discourse centers whichever beloved Disney property is getting, you know, butchered this year. But it's more than just Disney. Whenever an animated series or movie or even a video game seems to gain popularity, the question of, oh my gosh, like what if this, you know, got a live action remake? Springs up like fucking weeds every time. Oh my God. And nine times out of 10, they range from to, oh my god, this is abysmal. Humans made this? The most recent lightning rod for this discussion is Netflix's live action remake of the beloved and acclaimed Avatar The Last Airbender. Favorite child? Ooh, ah, ouch. For a Nickelodeon cartoon that debuted in the mid 2000s, Absolutely no one expected this thing to be the darling of not just general audiences, but critics. It was a massive hit, telling a story that was both accessible to anyone willing to give it a try and deeply complex and nuanced beneath the surface. And it even received a second wind when it came out on Netflix just a few years ago. The franchise has seen some moderate success with its sequel series, The Legend of Korra, but equally it has suffered through shoddy video game tie-ins and a god-awful live action movie back in 2010. We don't talk about her. It's time for you to stop doing this! But it seems we're in an avatar renaissance. So much so that Viacom created a dedicated studio to pump out avatar content, while Netflix has been working on a live action series for quite a while now that the original creators pulled out of, and I oop. Interesting. <laughs> The red flag. The more news that seems to come out about the remake, the more people go, wait, uh, is, is this gonna, like, suck? Actually, is this gonna suck? Fans have apparently been clamoring for a live action remake for years. Well, so if I come and Nickelodeon keep fucking saying, and I'm sure there are pockets of the fan base where that is true, but do average viewers really crave an escape from animation that badly? Why do we keep doing this anyway? Why do we need live action remakes of stories we already enjoyed? Do they actually benefit from this adaptation? And moreover, why do we never ask the inverse? Why don't we ever wonder what a piece of live action media would look like animated? Lord knows I was asking that once upon a time. Ooh, girl, animate that shit. I'll eat it up. Game of Thrones? Yes, please. 
And what does all of this say about how we view animation as a medium? Today, we're going to talk about all of those things and why I personally am principally opposed to live action remakes. Yes, even the new Avatar one. Anyhow, before we begin, ciao! My name is Thomas, aka the Unicorn of War, and I make video essays and reviews on whatever media I enjoy at the moment. From Avatar to Winx Club to Fairy Tale and the Tale series, I try to share my personal takes on why certain elements of media resonate with me and why others don't. If any of that sounds interesting to you, then be sure to subscribe and ring that bell for notifications of new videos and community tab posts, because YouTube hates creators. You can also pledge your support for myself and the channel over on Patreon for extra rewards, including early access videos and video scripts, and exclusive content. Now without further ado, let the chaos commence. Good morning, Ian. It's undeniable that one of Avatar's greatest strengths was its animation. As a medium, animation is able to create fantastical worlds that live action just cannot recreate. From grand cities carved into Arctic ice, to one standing atop a tall mountain, to the spooky ethereal world of the spirits. Why did I say it like that? It allows complete creative freedom in what the team is able to dream up, limited only by the scope of their imagination. Not to mention, there's a certain charm to the vibrant colors and simple character designs, a certain je ne sais quoi. It helps to make characters more easily readable and identifiable. And with animation, you can further exaggerate their expressions, whether for comedy or moments of heightened emotion. You can have complete control over how the characters look, down to the most minute details, how they move, and how they interact with their world and even how the world interacts with them. And girl, do not get me started on the combat in this show. Avatar's magic system of elemental bending is rooted in real world martial arts, with each element taking inspiration from a different school. Because of the animation, characters are able to take these styles rooted in realism and apply them in fantastical ways that just would not look nearly as spectacular in live action. I mean, just look at Katara and Aang's fight against the sea serpent, or all the times characters ride along waves of earth or water or fire. These would be nightmares to pull off in live action, let alone make them look good. But animation makes them relatively simple to pull off. Note, I said simple. Not easy. Th this shit takes skill. So much of what makes Avatar great specifically comes from the fact that it is an animated series. As is often said, the medium is the message. To remove that animated aspect would be to remove one of the pillars of what makes Avatar what it is. You're just never gonna get something as expressive, breathtaking, handcrafted, nor captivating in live action. Legend of Korra continues this, especially in its fight choreography. Seeing the way that bending has evolved since the original series, especially in fight scenes involving the Red Lotus or Kuvira, provide you with some of the best fight scenes in any media. I mean, just, just look at this. Just look at this. Look at this! Do you see this? From what we've seen of the live action series, well, I, I do like some of the environmental design and the costuming, but overall it, it just feels inferior to the original. Many of the environments are not nearly as readable as the originals, primarily because animation, especially back when animation involved physical cell sheets, forces you to be mindful of what you place in each individual frame and what each element communicates. The live action remake, meanwhile, feels much muddier and less readable because of the sheer amount of detail that's crammed on screen, along with that tendency to try and drain away all the color and drown environments in disgusting amounts of illegible darkness. Like what, what is this? I, I can't even see anything. I can't make any of this out. I, those are lovely shadows, but like, I, whatever. Not surprising since this is an art form that the Disney live action remakes have down to a science. How do we take the original form and make it ugly. Not to say Avatar's live action elements aren't pleasing to the eye. For those looking for shiny spectacles, it works well enough, it functions. But the original Avatar was not satisfied with being merely functional. It strived for excellence. Rewatching the show to introduce one of my friends to it, I have been routinely taken aback with how 
even one-off locations are so well designed without being overly complicated. Specifically, I'm always left breathless by the expert use of color to communicate mood and story. With the original series, the creators were deeply intentional with every choice, not just in their writing, but in their designs. From the cities of the Earth Kingdom and the Fire Nation, to the swamps, mountains, and deserts across the world, to the designs of the Fire Nation soldiers and our main characters. You can tell just how much thought and care went into crafting every detail of this fictional world and how they all serve a greater purpose. The remake, meanwhile, is more concerned with replicating the original to try and resemble its splendor without necessarily understanding how or even why the original made the choices that it did. And that is quite common with many remakes and adaptations. Excuse me, I'm gonna briefly glare at Salem and Crystal for a minute. No reason, no reason at all. I'm not bitter. And the combat? Well, I, I'm not all that eager from what I've seen. Granted, I had low expectations to begin with, but realistically, how is any human, even a top tier martial arts expert, gonna live up to the animated character who doesn't have to obey the laws of physics or even the limitations of the freaking human body? Hell, no a monk who played Aang or Ong My name is Ong. in the Shyamalan movie was cast specifically for his martial arts skills, which that was a fucking mistake. I ran away, but I'm back now. But even with his skills, his airbending just felt so hollow and unimpressive. And honestly, I don't think all of that is down to the movie's terrible production or choreography. It's likely just an unfortunate reality imposed by live action as a medium. So if pretty much everything can only be watered down at best in the transition from animation to live action, why are we doing it in the first place? And the answer, is that we fucking hate animation. Much of Avatar's inspiration comes from Japanese anime, and that can be said for many forms of Western animation, not just in recent years, but even many of Disney's films through their character designs and art styles. Huge expressive eyes with tiny noses, kick-ass fight scenes, and a gaggle of loser nerds banding together to save the world. So many artists are inspired by Japanese animation, and there's a good reason for that. In Japan, animation is understood not as a genre, but as a medium. Animation is used to tell all kinds of stories for many different audiences, not just either children or your stereotypical anime fan. Here in the West, meanwhile, animation's perception has fluctuated wildly. When those animated shorts were being shared way back in the 1920s and 30s, they were actually seen as something darker and much crueler for adults that you wouldn't want to be showing to your kids unless you want them to have fucking nightmares. Well, then again, with the world the way that it was back then, they were already having nightmares. They, they were living in a nightmare. Uh, we're living in a nightmare. The world is a nightmare. And when Snow White came out, it wasn't seen as something for kids, but for all audiences. You know, back when general audiences meant actually general audiences. Like, everyone. Every single person. Anyone. A story designed so that anyone, be it a child, an adult, or an elder, could sit down and enjoy it as it unfolded before them. Avatar is much the same. Despite airing on a children's network, Avatar has been enjoyed by practically all audiences since its premiere. Hell, I've gotten comments on videos about fans introducing their parents and grandparents to Avatar and watching as the story hooks them effortlessly. Even people who wouldn't fuck with this kind of story normally. But in recent decades, animation has been branded as a genre meant primarily for children with adults considered strange if they haven't moved on to live action. It's a far cry from the way Snow White had adults transfixed nearly a century ago. Now, adult animation tends to be reserved for sitcoms, like d disgustingly raunchy ones that, you know, think sex jokes are inherently funny, with the same boilerplate animation style that feels like a bunch of executives brainstormed, what would look the most fucking hideous? Like, have you, have you seen these shows? They look awful. It, it looks like vomit on my screen. Who, who greenlit this? There has been a bit of a push with animated series for adults like Castlevania or Has Been Hotel, or even more mature series like Legend of Korra. But in turn, there has inexplicably been a strange backlash to try and keep animation for children and children only, be it Nickelodeon banishing Korra to terrible time slots and online only releases pre-streaming, or Disney admitting that to them, they don't 
think most adults are interested in the animation that they write off as just being for their annoying kids. This is Disney saying that. We live in hell. Or, oh God, certain Italian CEOs going, you know, I, I just think that older audiences are not as interested in the cartoons. They want the edgy vampire diary knockoffs. Oh my God. Yeah, as if every adult wasn't clamoring over the fucking owl house before Disney shot it in the back of the head. But this backlash is not from audiences. Rather, it's from the companies making these series. And I'd assume there's a good reason for it. Their goal, like all companies, is not to produce or provide good content, but rather to make content that turns a profit. If people consume it and they can minimize costs and maximize returns, it's a success in their eyes and ones that they would love to repeat with minimal effort. Even if people hate it, if they still hate watch it, they're still consuming it and you're still making money, sometimes more than if people actually did love it. And you know that is a reliable business strategy. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, when y'all pick a new awful show of the week and none of you will shut up about it, it's not going to make the creators go, we should make something better. It's going to make them go, let's piss them off more and make more money. Animation in particular is an incredibly expensive medium, far more expensive than live action productions. Hell, Disney actually went bankrupt producing Snow White, having to rely on Joe Rosenberg for additional funds by showing him an early cut of the movie. We're talking like storyboard early. I'd argue that's why companies love live action remakes. They're able to turn their brains off, recreate a product that already exists that costs a fraction of what the original did, and then lazily release it to audiences who presumably will eat that shit up because it's just a chance to project their nostalgia onto an inferior product. And if it's bad, you'll still get money from them hating it anyway. And in turn, low effort animation is much more appealing given it won't require as much time or money to produce something of Avatar's caliber. That is why there was that whole boom of weird animated kids videos on YouTube back in the 2010s. Kids, especially younger ones, are largely passive viewers. And so long as you put bright colors and familiar characters in front of them, they'll watch and rewatch unquestioningly as you rake in that sweet, sweet ad revenue. Because of these things, there is a clash of goals and incentives between the people making the content and the viewers consuming it. And so it makes sense for companies to manufacture consent to try and convince audiences that animation is for babies so as to prime them for shoddy live action remakes, while animation is reserved for the younger audiences who they assume will be far less critical and far easier to squeeze money out of. That's also why we never seem to ask, why don't we just adapt this into animation? It's becoming more common when it comes to video game adaptations, but on a broader scale, nobody seems to ask for animated adaptations the way that they do for live action ones. And that's because companies don't want to fucking make them. They don't want to deal with how costly such an investment would be. And in turn, they've conditioned us to believe that it wouldn't be worth adapting something into an art form considered lesser. And so you get this atmosphere where audiences have been convinced that animation is an inferior art form meant primarily, if not exclusively, for children. Even among animation enthusiasts, they tend to subconsciously believe animation to be more niche, less respectable, and less worthy of admiration. This is why you get so many people craving for live action remakes of things that they love, even if they're already considered to be masterpieces, because live action is considered the key to mass appeal. But how will Avatar ever be loved by the masses if it's a fucking cartoon? Hell, when Shyamalan's movie was in production, it was considered to be the only way to get broader audiences invested in the Avatar franchise. This is all made funnier by countless examples of adults, even those who wouldn't normally enjoy animated media or high fantasy stories, being introduced to Avatar and falling in love with it. Avatar itself is already as close to perfect as mankind is ever gonna fucking get. It was lightning in a bottle, and its animation is a huge part of why, meaning that it doesn't need this adaptation. You wanna get someone into Avatar? Show them the original. That's all you gotta do, and then just watch them spiral into how good it is. Now, I should specify that I don't begrudge the actual cast and crew of the live action series. These people presumably are doing their best. And from what I can tell, many of them are fans of the original who want to do it justice. It just felt surreal getting to work with people who are so passionate about this project and 
really doing it justice. This is the live action adaptation that we've always wanted. Not to mention, many of them are Asian, both in front of and behind the camera. Excited at the prospect of working on a franchise so deeply rooted in Asian folklore and culture, given how they're often dismissed in mainstream media, or used as set dressing for stories about or made by white people. In that sense, I am rooting for all of them. For the longest time as an actor of color, you don't get opportunities to play in these kinds of franchises. You have no idea how important that is and how many more voices people will find because of this. And if any of you blame them for this problem, I will hunt you down myself and I'll cut you. But that said, I don't have much hope for this series personally, nor interest. I don't really need nor want a live action remake. The original is still here, and it's still stellar. Hell, it's aged like wine, getting better and better as the years go by. And that's honestly part of my hope, that new viewers will be introduced to the live action series, and then out of curiosity, go back to experience the original. And on the whole, it seems even general audiences are just fucking over live action remakes. The Disney remakes have been making less and less at the box office, which tells me that yes, the initial success of these remakes was most likely just a fad banking on nostalgia that doesn't work anymore. Thank you, God. The 2010s were a dark time. Though I also hate that I have to add the caveat that no, they didn't flop because they were woke whatever that fucking means. Oh god, the people who use that on ironically probably don't even know that it came from AAVE. Uh, they probably don't even know what AAVE is. Well, really, to these people, woke just means it had people of color and queer people in it, and I don't like that. The horror, the sheer horror of people who are different from you. Not gonna lie, Halle Bailey was the only reason I gave a single fuck about the live-action Little Mermaid. She was the only reason I had hope for it. I didn't actually bother to see it, but... You know, she was the only part I cared about. I mean, have you heard her and Chloe's album, The Ungodly Hour? Their vocals, their harmonies, simply divine. You people have no fucking taste. Love me at the ungodly hour. A black Ariel is not the reason the new Little Mermaid sucked. Okay? Are we clear? Are we clear on that? Good. Avatar fans generally seem excited about the live-action series, though there has been some trepidation the more news that comes out about its production. From the original creators leaving over creative differences, to recent announcements that the story would tone down Sokka unlearning sexism and removing Katara fighting the patriarchy. I- What? Have you seen the way the world has been going the last two years? We need this shit. <laughs> we need positive masculinity King Sokka. We need fight the patriarchy Katara. I, the world's going to hell in a handbasket. We need this. Hell, even removing a lot of the pit stops that the gang makes along the way to the North Pole. What the fuck are you people doing? What are you smoking? Are y'all smoking cactus parts? I, I, I don't know. I, I can't say cactus juice because how would you... How would you smoke a juice? I, uh, whatever, y'all know what I mean. It really does seem like in every regard, this adaptation is gonna be fine. Like, it, it's fine, it's gonna, it'll be fine, it'll be okay. But it's gonna feel like a very watered down version of the original. And we are Avatar fans, okay? We expect excellence. Fuck, Legend of Korra was leaps and bounds above many of its fucking contemporaries, and I would argue it is still a great series, but our spoiled asses will still routinely pick it apart like vultures because of how it fumbles compared to the original. Well, some of us do. Some of us have valid critiques. Others usually hate it because wah wah Korra Mary Sue or some stupid shit like that. I don't fucking know. I don't claim those people. But we do not just want. We expect excellence. We crave it. We yearn for it, as the children yearn for the mines. I don't know, I've recently seen that meme and I'm kind of obsessed with it, mostly because of how twisted and fucked up and funny it is. And when we do yearn for the mines, I mean for excellence, we're going back to the original series, and we're going to appreciate all of the beauty that it has to offer. Animation as a medium? deserves better. She deserves her fucking flowers, thank you. And I think on some level, people understand what it's capable of. I just hope that eventually, we'll all be fucking over live action remakes as a whole, and we'll just instead learn to appreciate the story as it was meant to be told. And also adapt some of these live action properties into animation, because maybe I'll actually be able to see what's fucking happening, because the lighting won't be so fucking awful. So if you're excited for the live action Avatar series, I hope you enjoy it. Genuinely, I do mean that. 
but I'm not expecting much. I'll check it out when it drops, just out of, you know, morbid curiosity or whatever. But ultimately, the animated series will always be the definitive edition. And in general, I will die on the hill that animation is that girl. Anyhow, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like this from me, then be sure to subscribe and ring that bell for notifications because YouTube hates creators. Also, please consider pledging your support for myself and the channel over on Patreon. I'm the Unicorn of War and live-action remakes are almost always a fucking shit show. <laughs>